Hi, it's Naomi Seawald. I'm going to be filming my uh, major sketchbook for my submission, which is a bit weird, but we'll get through it. <laughs> so I started with a mood board for my project. It was kind of like looking into what I wanted to uh, portray, inspired by my dissertation. So it was kind of looking at the cabinet of curiosity concept, um, some of these botanical illustrations and the taxidermy birds and bringing them uh, back to life in a way through repeat patterns and and like putting them in different environments and seeing how they like interact with their new environment of the archive so these were a couple of my um, first instances of uh, research with colours and yeah so I did a little trip to the Natural History Museum I took some pictures while I was there and I did a few sketches on site. So there was a beautiful big case of taxidermy birds, which I stood at and did some um, quick sketches of them. And they were all posed in really interesting ways, including these hummingbirds um, in a big glass case. It was all very <laughs> overwhelming. But um, so I did, I didn't want to just focus on the birds. Obviously I tried to get some more contextual re references as well. So I did some textural feather, paintings with my ink and brush pens and working with Posca, Posca pens on darker grounds because I really wanted to do the darker grounds this project. This one's a really lovely one it's a um, what's his name? It's a Victorian peacock pigeon and I loved his uh, lovely little head feathers and I actually worked with graphic for the first time on this which I really really enjoyed. I've done quite a lot of graphic drawings throughout this project which I loved, including this one. So this is another one from the Natural History Museum cabinet. He was posed in there. And then looking at some of the other ones where it's more of the, the less taxidermied and more staffed and mounted and tagged as they only had, well, when they used to come back of the expeditions in the Victorian times, they would bring back just the skins. So they would have these empty skins and they didn't know how to stuff them or to pose them. So they would just keep them as like long and flat. And I looked at the little tags in the books. I went back then and I looked at um, where I initially started with the project. So I knew I wanted to do something quite deep, dark, something a bit interesting. So I initially went with the whole biophilia, um, looking at Botticelli's paintings and the Garden of Eden and the, cause there was a lot of like bird references in all of these things. Going to the National Gallery and I had these beautiful orange paintings that I did inspired by Botticelli and uh, Leonardo Vincenzo. So he did a lot of botanical illustration with odd shaped fruits, which was another thing they used to keep in um, ca curiosity cabinets cause they would collect everything that's a bit weird and wonderful. And these were a couple of watercolours that I did inspired by the National Gallery trip I did and testing um, the orange blossom motif on different grounds to see which ones really suited it most. I think the orange works the best with it. And here's a little mood board I did of the Primavera design that I did for the orange blossoms in different colourways. So I had, I tried like the darker orange and the lighter, and like a very, very dark green but I don't like that one as much but, and now I got more into um, the curiosity cabinet as per se uh, going to the National Gallery and seeing um, Jan van, van Kessel's works so these very very tiny trompe de l'eau I think they're called paintings which I looked at in my dissertation as well that um, were really 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 lifelike botanical illustrations which were really odd at the time because he added the shadows which weren't really like done and um, I did this beautiful atlas moth like a subsection from that and cross-referencing it with an artist m called Mariah Sibylla Marianne which I looked at in my live brief and one of my main um, artist references for this project is John James Audubon just because his beautiful beautiful realistic um, botanical illustrations that he did. I love the colourways, finding um, different colours from it. I like, what was that? So he, the thing is with a lot of the botanical illustrators I've chosen, they, they subverted their genre a bit because they mixed the 
to blur the lines between science and art. So it's kind of like it wasn't just the study of this. He has the background. He has the little ones in the background there. There's, they're sitting on a branch or they're sitting in, in the scene of a, a rainforest. And mixing his work with Maria Sibylla Marianne. They've got quite similar colour schemes that emerge, whether that's because of just the birds or... But I really, really liked this one by Elizabeth Gold, which I found in my... Um, cabinet of natural curiosities book which i haven't been able to scan because it is so big but there's lots of these botanical illustrations in here and i found her in here with her work and i did my um depiction of the lyrebird from it the colors are a bit exaggerated because i wanted to really get that quite emeraldy tone and i think it pairs really well with the leather kind of like the tone of the project I really wanted it to be quite high-end so I did a couple of color testing on the colors that I had different tones of the browns and the greens and I came up with these and also testing gouache and the emulsions because in this in this stage I was still ready to print wallpapers and do it that way um, and then I started looking at Emma Shipley after we came back from London and the Wallace collection and um, she has been a massive, massive inspiration to me. Like every time I see her patterns, I'm just like, wow, that's that's what I want to do. They're so quirky and the animals kind of like me leap in natural ways and they weave around each other. And I did another reproduction of the lyrebird inspired by her work in graphite, which I really enjoyed, with the goal to digitally... Well, the initial goal was to screen print it onto a wallpaper and um, separate it into different layers. But then I ended up having to do it digitally after everything happened. And here's a couple of my on-site sketches from the Wallace collection. Looking at like motifs from little bits of paintings and um, trims of gilding from down the sides of things. And these beautiful twirls and curls that were found on every bit of furniture. I really enjoyed doing these. And then I did a few studies of the furniture as well. I really love this candlestick one, which features in my the um, archive collection design. So I started to get more into my research then on um, wallpapers, and obviously I had to go with William Morris. Looking at William Morris again, and Walter Crane especially, I love this one, which is just such a simple... <laughs> it looks simple, but it's so complicated in its, like, um, in its composition where it... It's, it flips and then adding bits in between to make it um, seamlessly repeat much like this one as well and I find and I found that I'm kind of still running with the Alphonse Mucha twirls and whirls and colour schemes as well and then I did my lovely birds and berries painting with gouache trying to keep to this um, really lovely teal dark colours on there and I did as well with the emulsion paints, I tried this one. And at this point we were kind of outside of uni, um, we didn't know what was happening and I thought, oh God, how am I gonna start <laughs> trying to fix this project? So I started doing some textural pieces with golds because Wallace Collection really made me want to work with gold, gold foil, gold pearl, oh, I couldn't wait. And then digitally it just didn't hold up. So I tried doing some physical experimentations with it which were really, really interesting and they come up really nicely on digital. It would be lovely to see them printed on fabric when I'm able to order some. And looking at more um, modern references then, so House of Hackney was another modern designer that really, really influenced me with this um, collection they did of these beautiful Devore snakes on velvets. Um, the velvets and the trims really inspire me with these. I really love the deep dark greens. So here's a couple of um, drawings I did from the Wallace collection as well, going with that um, really, really light, kind of like muted. You can see in here, it's kind of more gold, but I decided to go with the, the muted greeny, sea foamy type color, because it was on a lot of the walls and I didn't want it to be too similar to the other ones. And then starting to look more at 
how I could use my beautiful lyre birds. So I did a lot of research on bird influenced repeats and I found this one by Zofani. Zofani. <laughs> I'm not sure how you say it, but it, it works so well in a vertical and and the it's so simple but just little bits poking off so taking note of different repeats and how I'm going to do that and um, Timorous Beasties was another one that really really influenced me in my final design choices because their wallpapers have such a interesting colour palette if you know what I mean it doesn't feel like it should work but it does and they did this lovely archival twirly swirly you can't really see it very much on there but you get the impression of it and that's how I'd hoped mine would look when I separated them for screen I got a bit more into drawing the birds because I knew I needed quite a bit more for my um, designs I knew I needed quite a bit of references and uh, motifs to draw from so Timur Species again with these um, climbing verticals I really like the the thin branch it's kind of like like the Chinese hand-painted wallpapers that I looked at for my dissertation that were kind of like they climb and they they spread out and they'd be like a mural type in in the beginning I really wanted to do murals for this project but it just didn't work with the digital I really wanted to do it physically and it was really hard at home to try and get the space to, and the and the scanner <laughs> I couldn't even imagine trying to scan something that big on my tiny little scanner so I started doing some more emulsion, um, just colour swatches again to kind of refine my colour palette and I really like these ones and these kind of like off colours that I'm going to need because like things like a lot of them have like off colour backgrounds that are really subtle and I think that's what makes them work so well but also introducing this beautiful orange with my um, hoopo bird I really wanted that kind of pop of colour in some of these that kind of pairs with the leather mood I was going for so I kind of chose chose this not quite this but I was looking for so it's kind of like burnty orange darker I digitally manipulated the hoopos their colors because they didn't they came out quite soft in watercolors which I find always happens but I also um, I do did these branches to help me kind of like build start building the um, the repeats and then I have another lovely hobo to match him and my little colour palette of little browns and burnt siennas and things like that and my final kind of goal for this was to kind of get more uh, graphite drawings to support my lyrebird drawing so I got a bit further into the birds of paradise looking at odd odd little twirly head bits and their lovely big feathers and um, and also doing little I didn't want to do too many botanicals in this because I didn't want it to overpower the project. I didn't want to turn it into a botanical project because I wanted to focus on the birds and the and the museum kind of feel. But I did this and it came out really, really lovely and it's worked really well in my designs. I've kept these just um, paper clipped in because I want to scan them again when we get back to uni. So I don't want to stick them in. I'm working with more... Um, working on making cohorts. So I'm not very good at making cords because I make everything quite difficult and, and overcomplicated. So I tried to focus on simplifying things. So picking out a feather, repeating that, picking out another feather or a tail feather and repeating that out. And I also did this last lovely bird to support my collection. And that is about it. It feels really strange to not have anything else to show you because I can't print any of my designs because I can't buy any ink for the printer. Um, but the rest is on my PowerPoint. I I have a lot of goals for where this could go and I, I'm, I'm excited to keep working on it in the next couple of weeks now when I can actually order fabrics and things. And I will keep working on it for my, for my Instagram and making these lovely visualizations because I've really enjoyed this project <laughs> as, as stressful as it's been at home, but I have really, really enjoyed doing it and I do love my outcomes, so. Yeah, that's about it for me from this uh, video. I hope you're all well and thank you very much.